السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello and welcome back to translation to course unit 7 In the last lecture we talked about denotative meanings and translation issues so we talked about synonyms hypernomies and hyponomies particularizing translation and generalizing translation in today's lecture we will talk about semantic overlap and overlapping translation also we'll talk about near synonyms and translation so open your book page number 80 section 7 Point one, point four, semantic overlap and overlapping translation. There is a third degree of semantic equivalence. Consider the following. قد وصف الكاتب البريطاني المرموق روبرت فيسك حفلة حفلة غناء في بلغراد. Okay. It's translated as the distinguished British writer Robert Fisk. Simply described a concert in Belgrade. Now, if you look at the word here, the meaning of Hafle Brina is overlapped with the concert. Some concerts are examples of Hafle Brina, those in which they are singing. Okay, similarly, some cases of Hafle Brina are examples of concerts, those that are organized in a formal way with the musical players and audience. However, some concerns are not examples of hafla or hafla grina, those in which they are singing. Okay? However, uh, similarly, some cases of hafla grina are not examples of concerts. Those, for example, in which the hafla is not organized in formal way with the musical players and audience. So that's it. Concert as a translation of hafla drina generalizes by going beyond the idea of singing to include possibility of music without song. But at the same time, it particularizes by excluding the non-organized form of a party which is a possible interpretation of hafla. Taking the example of English concert and Arabic hafla drina, this kind of situation can be visualized as two partially overlapping rectangulars, as shown here in the figure 7.4. So, the area where the rectangular overlap the top left hand cell, this one, okay, represents the material, the target text, and uh, sorry, the source text and the target text, Rina. okay, in common. The cell on the top right. where the rectangulars do not overlap represent is what omitted from the target text, for example, singing. And the cell on the bottom left where the rectangulars do not, okay, do not overlap represent what it, what is added to the target text, organizes. This is another category of degree in translation of denotative meanings. We shall call it partially overlap overlapping translation or partial overlap for short partial overlap is common and often unavoidable okay it can apply to single words as well as to a phrase or a whole sentence if in a given context Ustad is translated as a lecturer a teacher the target text certainly keeps the reference to someone who instructs but it also particularizes because it adds the specific details that she works in a university and not in a school. And at the same time, it generalizes because 
because it omits detail for her gender. When the target language offer no suitable alternatives, partial overlap is acceptable. If the omitted details is unimportant or is implied in the overall target text context, and if the if the added details does not clash with the overall source text of target context. Therefore, translating Ustaza as a lecturer or a teacher, for example, will depend on the context normally by as harmless as it is unavoidable. Okay? Typical uses of partially overlapping translation parallel those of particularizing translation and generalizing translation, which we discussed earlier. The previous lecture does. Partially overlapping translation may be used where the context implies something that is typically referred to by a term in the target language whose detonative meanings, denotative sorry meaning, overlaps with denotative meanings of the source language term. For example, if we consider this one, طردوها كعصفور الربيع إلى أن قتلوها. This has been translated as they attacked her like a young sparrow until they killed her. Here, overlaps in meaning with the young. Or هو الربيع. كلمة طردوها كعصفور الربيع. Here's the example. Okay. So the word ربيع. Overlap with the young. Some but not all spring sprouts are young. Okay. And some uh, okay. Spring sprout, however, is a prob uh, problematic phrase in English. It does not have a clear meaning, and there is nothing in this over overall context to make intended meaning clear in English. Sparrow also yelled an unfortunate collective clash with spring chicken, meaning most basically young chicken for eating. Okay, but most commonly found in a phrase such as he for spring chicken, when spring chicken is an idiom essentially meaning young. Okay.